Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when you are working together. Today is our lesson number 28. We are on page number 94. The very first problem that you see there on page one, page 94 is 132. As you can see, as you can see, the problem is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to read the problem to you. Then I'm going to get out of the frame. I want you to pause the video, do the problem yourself, and then we'll compare your work against the work that, that, that we'll do together, as, as is the routine always. Here we go. It's a very straightforward problem. We are told that Bob has already run three quarter miles from point A. So I'm starting point A. He has already run three, three and a quarter miles. He will run for another 50 minutes. He only has another 50 minutes to do his jogging. He's going to run another 50 minutes at the speed of eight minutes per mile. That's how long, that's how long he takes to run one mile, eight minutes per mile. The question simply is how far can he run and still be able to come back to the starting point in the 50 minutes that he has. Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's take a look at it, shall we? In a problem like this, it's always helpful to have uh, a pictorial, a, a visual aid. So let's, let's make a little picture here as to what's going on from A to B. So that it's easier to visualize the whole thing. So here we go, we're running from point A to point B. We are told that we already run three and a quarter miles. We're going to run other X miles and still be able to come back. And, <coughs> and this X, of course, is what we're interested in finding out with the understanding that when we're coming back, the distance that we need to travel is three and a quarter miles that we did up to here plus this X. That's what we need to figure out. That's how far we have to run. What the question is how far can I run? That's X is what we're trying to figure out. And we're going, we're going at the speed of 8 minutes per mile. So the very first thing we need to do is figure out how many miles we can actually run in the 50 minutes that we have. Set it up as a proportion. Minutes and miles. We're told that we take 8 minutes for 1 mile. We have 50 minutes. How many miles can I possibly go? Bring the X over there. Bring the X down. 50 over 8, that's 25 over 4, and simply 6 and a quarter. 6 and a quarter miles is what we can run in the 50 minutes that we have. And therefore, therefore, let's erase this part now. This distance that we have to run, which is x plus this guy, 3 and a quarter plus x, must equal 6 and a quarter. That's all we can run in the 50 minutes that we have. All we have to do now is solve this, solve this thing for x. Which is quite straightforward actually. We have a 3 and a quarter, we have a 6 and a quarter, subtract so 3 and a quarter from both sides and that becomes 3. And x and x, there is an x here, there is an x here. It cannot be any simpler than that. We can run mile and a half. No more. We will have to run mile and a half and come back. Let's do the next one. In the next problem we are told that we have deposited X dollars at 8% compounded annually. Compounded annually is of course what usually happens, it's just a simple interest rate, that's all it is. We are further told that a year later We're going to deposit other X dollars at 
the further told that the account has account has W dollars at the end of two years. The question simply is what is X in terms of W? What is X in terms of W? Go ahead, do it yourself. Pause the video. Okay, here we go. Again, set, set up a nice picture. A nice picture of a timeline so we can see everything. So we're going to start. We're going to start at point zero and that's when we deposited X dollars in the account. At the end of the first year, because it is earning 8%, whatever we deposited, X dollars in this case, whatever we deposited will have 108% of that amount. 108% is 1.08 X, to which we added other X dollars. Now the question is, how much money do we have at the end of second year? This is the end of the first year. How much money do we have at the end of the second year? The money, the amount of money that we have, we're going to have in the, at the end of second year is 108% of this amount. It is simply 108% of this amount. 1.08x, 1.08x plus x. If you distribute 1.08, we're going to end up with if you distribute it here, we're going to end up with 1.08 squared x plus 1.08 x. Let's take out the x common. We could have done this actually one step. Take out the x common. There's an x here, there's an x here. Take it out common. And we're left with 1.08 squared plus 1.08. And that is what they're calling w. And now, we just have to do one last step where we have to solve for x. So whatever we see on this side, w is going to be divided by this quantity. That's all. x equals w over all of this. 1.08 plus 1.08. And that's your answer choice. 133. And as you can clearly see, that this are, these are all numbers, this can be simplified more. We can figure out what 1.08 squared is and, and, and then add another 0.08 to it, but obviously they don't expect you to do that in the exam to spend that kind of time doing silly multiplication. So they left it like this. All the answer choices are in this form. You don't have to waste any more time with it. That's the answer. 134. In 134, we are told that M represents the sum of the reciprocal of consecutive integers from 201 to 300 inclusive. question is how much is M? And here are the answer choices. I'm going to give you the answer choices very quickly. Uh, let's start here. 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Over 1, over 1, over 1, over 1, over 1. And on the other side we have 2, 3, 5, 7, 9. 2, 3, 5, 7, and 9. One half, one third, one fifth, one seventh, one ninth. Those are your answer choices. I know it's kind of ugly, but you can read it. So the question is very straightforward. How much is M? They don't expect us to figure out the precise value of M. They just want us to be able to give a range. That's the sum of this reciprocal. That's the reciprocal of consecutive numbers from 201 to 300. If we were to write out all the consecutive numbers 
from 201 to 300 inclusive in other words we're going to start with 1 over 201 plus 1 over, 1 over 202 plus 1 over 203 and so on and so forth up to 1 over 299 plus 1 over 300 and if you were to sit there and actually do out the math they don't expect us to find a precise number they just want us to give us the range does the sum of these number, does the reciprocal of this integer, does it fall between one third and one half, or one fifth and one third, or one seventh and one fifth, or one ninth and one seventh, or one eleventh and one ninth? Go ahead, choose. I hope. I hope that you actually do take the trouble when I give you the chance to pause the video, to actually do pause the video, that you actually do pause the video and do it yourself. You'll get a lot more out of it instead of just sitting there and staring at the screen. Do it yourself always first. Let's take a look at it. The second thing I wanted to point out is that, and this is something I have told him in the past also several times, these words that you see in capital, reciprocal, consecutive, inclusive, they're not written like this in the book. In the exam, they're not going to be nice to you and give you these words in capital letters. I'm just doing it for you to be able to see it easily. But you have to pay attention to what is being said. So we have the sum. I'm going to raise all of this thing. You already have the answers. We have the sum. They're calling it M. And it's going to look something like this. 1 over 201 plus 1 over 202 plus 1 over 203, 1 over 204, so on and so forth, 1 over 299, and 1 over 300. And that's what we have to find out. And since they're only looking for a range, we're not looking for a precise answer, that's what we're going to do. We're going to find some estimate. So here we go. So first time around, it's very straightforward. Once you see it, actually it's very straightforward. The first time around, we're going to pretend that they are all 1 over 200. Every one of them. Let's just pretend that they are all 1 over 200. So that's going to give us approximate value of M, the lower end the lower end of the range. If they are all 1 over 200 and there are 100 of them, from 201 to 300 there are 100 of them, so the lower part is this, 100 times 1 over 200. I think you get the idea. The second time around, to find the other end of the range, let's pretend that they are all 1 over 300. And it ends at 1 over 300. That, that's going to give us the other end of the range. We'll, we'll arrange the range in a second, and there are 100 of them. So it goes from this to there are 100 of them. And if they were all 1 over 300, if every one of them was 1 over 300, the, the sum of the 100 of them would have been one third. If they were all 1 over 200, the sum would have been one half. As you can see, the two draws drop, drop out. So it goes from one half to one third, but of course we don't give a range like that, we have to put the lower value first, so the answer is one third to one half. But we don't know we don't know the precise value of M, but whatever the bloody hell it is, it's going to fall in that range, somewhere between a third and a half. There are three more problems in the second column there, uh, not actually second column, actually. that is actually the end of the page. It is the end, at, at the end of the page, we're going to meet again tomorrow, we're going to stop here, we're going to meet again tomorrow and we're going to pick up from problems that you see on page number 95. Alright, bye now.